Which resources should you use to help you get interview ready? A two minute icebreaker, why medicine? For my final ISC medical giveaway. <laughs> I'm a first year medical student at the University of Nottingham and welcome back to my channel. So a quick disclaimer, I'm really struggling to get the camera in focus and get the lighting right, so I just hope everything's okay. If you're new here, be sure to check out my Instagram um, and my website and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out any of my uploads or any of my posts. So on my Instagram, I mainly help aspiring medics but I also give A-level advice. Head over to my Instagram to check out what I post and don't forget to follow me. So as you've seen from this title, it's going to be an interview video helping you get ready for your interview preparation. I was just going to do this based on my own experience but I think I'll do that in a separate video. For now, I asked on my Instagram what you'd like to know. So I got some responses, I'm just going to go through those and hopefully get through all of them. If not, I'll just make my way through as many as I can. So interviews are a really exciting point of the whole application process. If you've got this far, well done. So you've only got a few more hurdles before you can get that place at med school. I actually got um, three interview invites at the University of East Anglia, um, Queen's Belfast, no, Queen's University Belfast, and then the University of Nottingham, which I'm at right now. I got offers from University of East Anglia and Nottingham and then I withdrew my application um, from Belfast. So yeah, interviews really are just like your chance to shine and just show your personality and just show why this med school should pick you, why you deserve a place here and why you picked this med school. Um, I think that's it for the cringy intro. <laughs> now let's get on with the video. So the first question I'm going to answer is how to prepare and be ready. All I've got to say with that, as I say with pretty much everything, is lots and lots and lots of practice. Practice makes perfect. You want to make sure you've got that simulated experience of the interview environment. So what I used to do is I'd get a dining chair, i sit in my living room, my mum and my sister would be on the sofas and they'd be asking me different questions. I did have the ISC medical interview practice book and we'd use that or we'd use other resources which I'll talk about later on. If you are lucky enough to have someone to help you, that's great. If not, you can always record yourself and then watch it back to look at your facial expressions, make sure you maintain eye contact, look at your posture, or you can always sit in front of a mirror and watch yourself answer the questions and give yourself feedback um, whilst you're sat in front of that mirror. Whatever you do, make sure you are receiving feedback either from yourself or from someone else, just so you can improve because there's no point doing something and practicing if you aren't going to improve. If you can, try and practice with lots and lots of different people because at a panel you're going to have about three or four people sat there, but at MMI you're going to meet at least six different people. So different people who you can practice with or who can help you practice are like managers at work if they're ever free or colleagues at work. I remember at work when it was a bit quiet I'd sit on the shop floor um, and I'd do role plays with some of my colleagues um, or they'd ask me interview questions and um, they were really helpful which was great. Also I was fortunate enough to get a junior doctor to help me out. Another person who can help you out is if you've got like an MDV, a medics, dentist and medicine scientist coordinator um, at your college they'll probably hold interviews and help you prepare and help you get ready something i do want to say though is that you don't pay for a course one day crash course cannot compare to weeks and weeks of practice also with practicing try your best to practice using real questions or questions that are very similar to what you are going to get asked so this brings me on to my next question which is resources so which resources should you use to help you get interview ready this is just based on my recommendation and what i use so first of all something that i found really useful was the isc medical interview book that was really helpful it is mainly panel interview stuff but towards the back they have um some mmi type questions but with the panel interview stuff it is generic stuff that you can get asked in any single MMI station so yeah it was useful just to have those questions there to read through the example answers what's good and what's bad and with that because I found this book so useful I've got a fresh and brand new copy which I'm going to give for my final ISC medical giveaway the steps for this are first of all to like this video subscribe to my channel follow me on Instagram and share this post I'm probably gonna leave at this side 
are this side. But yeah, four simple steps for your chance to win this ISC medical interview book and hopefully that will help you get ready for your interviews. So there's other resources, uh, Six Med, Blackstone Shooters, BMO and the Medic Portal. So with Six Med and Blackstone Shooters, I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure how up to date they were. They were useful in giving me like an idea of what to expect for each med school, but I found that these were quite outdated. So especially for Nottingham, in Nottingham, unless they're going to change it, they have a two minute icebreaker where it's not assessed, you just answer a question for about two minutes and then you start the interview. So it was stuff like describe what a friend is like. My icebreaker question was nothing like that. So yeah, I'm not sure how up to date these resources are, but they're still there to give you an idea of some questions that these universities could ask. Also with BMO, there's someone on YouTube who's answered like the first 10 questions. So it gives you a good idea of the thought process and why and why not you should reach a certain answer or a certain conclusion. So again, that's really good. And the medic portal is just great. They have loads of different questions for different aspects of the whole interview, both for panel and for MMI. So another question is brief on the hot topics this year. And oh my God, do I even need to say it? Coronavirus! Coronavirus! This is something that you definitely should do a lot of research on. Consider the wider impact on the economy, on the NHS, what pressures it put on the NHS. But make sure you can summarise topic, about two or three short and concise sentences at the most. So what have you learnt? This is the most important part. Not what have you learnt in terms of what was the outcome of the news story, but how can you apply this to medicine? What is the takeaway message from this? How will this apply to your studies? How will this make you a better doctor? What's the impact of the NHS? What's the impact for society and for patients, etc. So with the news stories, it's what's it about? What have you learnt? How can it relate to medicine? With the Medic Portal, I'm not sure when they started, whether it's around interview season or whether they just do it throughout the year, but they do like top three hot topics summarised and that's really good because it gives you ideas of what to talk about and it's kind of like a little cheat. So in the coming weeks of my interviews, uh, consistently I would look at the NHS topics and what was recent and what was current. And in particular, there was one that was really good for um, Nottingham, although I actually didn't get asked, but there was something about the QMC in there at one point, quite in my interview, so that was great. So another question that I was asked was Nottingham interview questions. I did sign a non-disclosure form for Nottingham and for the other two places I interviewed at. And it's something that you're going to do everywhere you interview at, so you can actually talk about the questions that you were asked. I think it does question your fitness to practice, because it puts others who you speak to at an unfair advantage. I was asked sorts of questions and what my Nottingham interview was like. I think I do want to do another video giving you my experiences for all three of my interviews. Hopefully I'll film it over the next coming weeks and it'll be up soon. But to be honest, you can get like um, the form or a quick brief of the questions of what you can expect on the university website. Um, probably when they email you as well for like, the invitation, they'll probably give you some more information about the format of their interviews and what they expect, what they're assessing for. With Six Med and Blackstone Shooters, they do tell you examples of past questions, but again, I'm not sure how recent they are, and they do tell you what the interviewers are assessing you on so again that's useful. You want to preempt the examiner and the only way you can do that is by practicing lots lots of questions and making sure you've got a variety of answers to a variety of different questions. Don't learn answers word for word. It makes you sound like a robot and you lose personality. So another question is when to start preparing and this probably isn't the answer that you want to hear but I'm going to say it's quite a difficult question to answer that because it just really depends on when your interview is. Ideally the earlier the better but you don't want to start too early and buy yourself out. If it helps though, for me, I started preparing, um, I'd say October half term, so I think towards the end of October. If you do want to start um, from October half term, I just say just start nice and easy, read through some examples, watch videos and have people answer them, get a notebook or a file to have everything in the same place and start answering questions to why medicine, um, why this medical school, why medicine and not nursing or any other um, science degree. Um, so why you? What do you do in your spare time? And what are your weaknesses, etc. I do want to answer these in another video, so I won't talk about those too much detail now. Just want to research each medical school you've applied to, you expect an interview invite from, and what's in the area. So for Nottingham, for example, I did do a lot of research into the city because I knew that out of all the universities I applied to, I really wanted to go here. I just found information about the nightlife, um, what there was to do for students, what there was just is in the area, what the food's like. <laughs> Just things like that. And I remember talking about one of the clubs, Prism, at one of the role play, and the interviewers absolutely loved that. It really made them laugh. 
So yeah, just do your research and just spend this time right now between now and getting your interview advice, just do some brief prep and just some general research about the course, the med school and the area. Another question that I got asked is how much should you be yourself? It's literally as cheesy as it sounds and as tacky as it sounds, you just really have to be yourself. The interviews want to see that you're an open and honest person, they want you to be approachable and just really let your personality shine through. I am a very smiley person as you can see, but 90% of this at my interview was probably nerves. My interviews, I was very smiley and I just let my personality shine through. And I cracked jokes where appropriate, I laughed where it was appropriate. The other times I was serious and I showed I'm a serious candidate and this is something that's really important to me and that I really want a place at this med school. So another question is when do you hear back from each uni? And again, probably not the answer that you want to hear but it does vary. The medic portal, I think, I'm not sure when they post it but they do post, uh, they do upload a blog post. Um, telling you when you can expect to hear back and this is quite accurate to be honest. So another question is weird questions that I wasn't expecting. Again I can't really tell you too much information about this because of the non-disclosure form. I'll give you like a brief description of one of them. So it was a time when I had a particular outcome that I wasn't expecting so I had to describe that and then talk about how I resolved that and how I moved on from that and how I learned from that. And then another one would be when I did something morally incorrect. And they're gonna ask you stuff like this just just to see you're a person so with that one like they do want you to be a good student they want to make sure you're open and you're honest but they appreciate that people do things wrong and people make mistakes they don't want them to tell you about a time you either i don't know robbed a bank or you run someone over that's not what they're looking for at all they just want to make sure that you have an awareness of your mistakes and you, you are aware that you can do things wrong we, you are human so that's okay but they want to know like um, what you learn from it and how you rectify the situation, how you made sure that situation never came about again, or you never made that same mistake again. So another question that was asked was um, common questions asked, um, and like I said, I wanted to do a separate video on this, so yeah, that's definitely going to come. Hopefully, I'll get that done in the next couple weeks and get it out to you before your interviews start. Just some final things that I want to say. So the first thing is, you should have a book or a folder with all your interview practice. You just keep all your things in one place, so it's neat and it's organised and it's easy to get to. Something else I'm going to say is to make your own notes. You'll learn a lot more from this and you'll be better able to confidently speak about your own experiences rather than copying what someone else said. So yeah, with that, reflect your own experiences and refer to your reflective journal that you kept during your work experience. Um, that's what it's there for and this is the time to use it. In my personal statement video, I talked about making your personal statement interview proof. Now is the time to use that to your strength and your advantage. Within your med school interviews, they could ask you about any part of your personal statement. So you need to make sure that you know your personal statement like the back of your hand or at least as well as possible. I'd say pick two or three experiences maybe four at the most that you can talk about confidently, you can expand on. Talk about what you did or what you observed, what was the outcome and what did you learn. Ways of helping you get used to your personal statement is just to print it out in A3, annotate it several times and get your family members or your colleagues to ask you about the experiences on your personal statement. So another thing that I kind of touched upon earlier is just thoroughly do your research on that medical school. Make sure you know as much information as you can find about that med school. So for example, how long is their course? Some do five, some do six, some do seven. Um, if you're in postgraduate, that's for in some med schools. What is that med school's unique selling point? So if any of you do a Nottingham interview, I'll tell you the reasons why I picked it, and that's because of dissection. That was really important to me. Um, early clinical experience, which I'm actually not getting, but that's because of COVID. And then the final thing was the fact that you're going to come out with two degrees. So you get your B-Med Sci and you get your, um, what's it actually called? This is how aware the degree I'm doing. I feel like it's BMBS. Um, you get your medical degree at the end of it, so you be med sign your medical degree is what you get at the end of the five years. And for me, that's great. I still get to be a doctor, I get my B med sci, and I'm doing that in five years rather than in six. But I'd say, do this research for your own benefit rather than just for the interview. So again, we're doing the research in the med school, do they do prosection or dissections, and do you know the difference between? Also, do they do PBL or do they do lectures? Again, do you know the pros and the cons? So I said this before, but don't learn answers word for word. It makes you sound like a robot and you lose your personality. Practice makes perfect. It increases your confidence and it improves your performance. So practice as much as you can with who you can, where you can and when you can. But with that, don't let your A-level grades suffer just because of practicing for your interviews. My biology teacher always said that around a certain point in the year, her MDV students will always, like their grades will always slip. But for me, I'm not being arrogant, this wasn't the case. I was on my game and I made sure that 
I made time to my interview preparation pretty much every day, but I will still consistently practice my interviews. The best way you can organise this and arrange your time is just make a timetable. Check out this post on my Instagram for more information about making a timetable and organising your time. With interviews, you really are so near the end of the race. The other thing that's literally between you and that all important place is yourself. Just make sure your interview preparation is adequate and you are doing everything that you need to do to get the place that you want and the place that you deserve. But with that, Interview is also very fun, just make sure you enjoy yourself. I've got to say it was my favourite part of the whole application process. As you can tell, I love to talk and I was really passionate about medicine and applying to medicine so it was great to have the opportunity to talk about my experience with someone and to show why I am a perfect candidate and why I should be at that med school. Interview is extremely exciting. Like I said, if you've got an invite, well done. And to all of you who's about to have the interviews and for the rest of the application, just good luck with it all. And yeah, feel free to DM me on Instagram and let me know how you get along. Um, so yeah, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe and turn on your post notifications. Don't forget for your chance to win the ISC Medical Interview book. All you need to do is like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and share this post that's going to be somewhere on the screen. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure when this video is going to be out, but I reckon the giveaway will end like maybe like two weeks after that or a week and a half after that. And um, we'll just see in the time of everything. But yeah, good luck, guys. Head over to my Instagram so you don't miss out on any of my posts. And yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.